from the Moscone Center, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit San Francisco 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE here in San Francisco at Moscone West, theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services Summit. Uh, 2018 is the first of their kickoff of their little satellite events, really about developers and training and educating people on Amazon uh, Web Services products and services. Again, theCUBE covers reInvent, that's their big show. This is more of a, less of a salesy marketing, but more of a really get down and do with the developers and practitioners. I'm John Furrier with my co-host this week, Stu Miniman, all day today, wall-to-wall -to -wall coverage. Stu, the keynote just kicked off. Uh, Andy Jassy, not here, notable. Um, Werner Vogels does all the summits, so he's always been the headline. Last year, Andy Jassy kind of did the keynote of Fireside Chat. We had that up on our YouTube channel on SiliconANGLE Cube. Um, but here, the story is all about SageMaker and the continued dominance of Amazon Web Services. Um, and then again, as we were speculating at reInvent, and we've been saying on theCUBE, the, the maturization of Amazon Web Services is clear. Everyone knows the numbers, they're breaking out the reporting, they're clearly got competitive forces for the first time in AWS history. They have some serious competition upping their game. Microsoft nipping at their heels. Google putting out some open source tech. Uh, Oracle trying to throw FUD into the fire and say, you know, change the rules and kind of keep the rules on their terms. So the competitive pressure. But at the end of the day, there's a whole new era of modern software development, modern business applications, and we're seeing it with things like cloud expansion on-premise consolidation, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, decentralized infrastructure, blockchain, AI. These are the themes. This is what developers want. This is what businesses are doing. Let's analyze and discuss the keynotes. What's your thoughts? Yeah, so, so John, I mean, first of all, I mean, we, we watch the rolling thunder that is AWS, uh, kind of just rolling through the entire industry, and now rolling all over the globe. So the AWS Summit, I think they actually had an AWS Summit in Singapore like last night. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be covering a few of them. I, I was last year at the AWS New York City Summit, and I tell you, that New York City show alone was one of the best shows I went to all year. The amount of people, the excitement, what really differentiates, as you said, the big reInvent versus the Summit, first of all, the Summit, they tend to be a local audience. It's free for basically everybody to come in. So numbers are great. You know, we're in San Francisco. They're going to have 10, 15,000 people here, probably. Google Next, Google Cloud Next was here last year in February, and it feels almost the same amount of people here for a regional Amazon show. So just yeah. the numbers are wow. The announcements, every day Amazon's running out announcements. So, you know, Dr. Werner Vogels, Dr. Matt Wood, get up on stage, go through some of the usual. We're dominating every industry and every service and everything there, but when you piece apart, there's like, ooh, there's real announcements that are coming, things that jumped out. Uh, you talked about kind of the machine learning. Matt Wood talked about SageMaker is really growing super fast. People that I talked to that have been using it are loving it. They came out with SageMaker Local, which means that I can develop it on my laptop and do it with that cool, like uh, you know, take ML with that cool, uh, uh, what was it, the, the deep lens uh, that, that they've got. It's how do I get these environments? Amazon isn't just about you know, infrastructure, cloud anymore. They've gone to PaaS, they're pushing to edge, uh, they're doing all of these things. Uh, they had a whole ton of announcements, you know, when, when they were already past the time that the keynote's going to be done. Oh, you thought we're done, well, security, 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 and secrets yeah. manager, firewall manager. There's so many services, a theme I, I've been looking at the last couple of years. How do we keep up with all of this? Yeah. You know, even internally, you talk to Amazon people, you know, they don't know everything that everyone's doing because yeah. it's all those two pizza teams and how they're growing. And they always have to get the, all, all their sound bites in because they don't have a lot of time to get all that packed into one powerful punch. Um, just on a quick side note for the folks that are watching knows the Cube, we've been covering Amazon really since the beginning, since the reInvent started. Uh, you know we've been covering data center infrastructure and big data with Hadoop and now beyond. Uh, you're starting to see coverage around blockchain and cryptocurrency. So again, we are expanding our coverage of the AWS ecosystem and cloud to include uh, most of the major regional shows of AWS Summit, uh, continuing to go deep into the AWS reInvent and the community. Uh, we are also initiating coverage heavily on Google. Google Cloud Next will be at their show, uh, and soon to be at Microsoft's show. That's still to be determined uh, with Microsoft that they will let us in. We're working on that. We think that's going to be good, but we'll be nailing and doubling down on the cloud coverage. So Stu, with that as a backdrop, people know we've been deep with Amazon. Uh, I've been called an Amazon fanboy many times, but the numbers are clear. And, and again, I'm a Google fanboy, by the way, too. I love Google stuff. 
Uh, Microsoft, I got to learn more about them. Obviously they're bundling in Office, so they're a legacy player. Oracle, a legacy player. So you got two legacy players. You got Amazon and Google. I would put them kind of in two different categories. And then Alibaba in China trying to just dip in as you got those, the, the real kind of cloud native companies. Google and Amazon on one end. You have the legacy players with Microsoft and Oracle and IBM on the other. So you have kind of this really highly competitive environment. Um, we're seeing for the first or second time, Andy Jassy did it at reInvent, but Werner Vogels put up the competitive slide. He said, this is what we're doing. And he showed the number of services that Amazon offers vis-a-vis -vis the competition. And they didn't actually call out the vendors, but we kind of know, uh, I put on my Twitter feed, you can see it's number one, second one's Microsoft. Google, they put in the, the, the Google colors, that's obviously Google, and red is Oracle. Amazon is clearly dominating on the number of services available across the cloud. So when we've been squinting through the numbers on who's leading who, you really got to look at two perspectives. The broad range of available services and the number of customers using those services versus point solutions that might be uh, one instance of the cloud. This is a new architecture, it's not the old waterfall model, it's not the old six months to provision into it. Mention that. This is a highly competitive environment. So Stu, I got to ask you, how do you squint through that and look at the competition that Amazon has? Obviously the, the numbers are great, but how should customers look at the competition? How are you looking at it? How is our team evaluating the competition? Yeah, well, well first of all, John, it is not a zero-sum game and it's very nuanced and complicated. And for most customers, it's not a solution, it's many solutions. And it's something that Amazon doesn't love as you talk about things like multi-cloud and they would say, well, you know, we have the best service everywhere and we're the cheapest everywhere and everyone's all in on us. Well, when you get down to it, you know, I, I, I hate, I have to defend a little bit. You say like, you know, Microsoft and Oracle, you know, legacy. Microsoft has you know, business productivity applications. They are the leader in the space when you talk about Yeah, they're the leader in legacy applications. But you, know, it, you start with the Microsoft Office Suites and say what you will, but it's still you know, dominant out there, it's there. Microsoft gave enterprises the green light to go to SaaS and that, well, they, they really well, helped no, well, drive that's that. A, that's a direction. Yeah. But they're a legacy vendor. They're, what you just said is their legacy. But Azure is doing quite well. Oracle's going to the cloud. You know, Are they legacy? Oracle's got a phenomenal team have been building some really interesting things in cloud, but obviously, no, no doubt about it, Amazon's leading. But when you talk to users and you say, okay, you know, there's lots of reasons why they might be using Azure for various pieces. Everybody is using AWS, except for those people, John, you didn't remember, the ones that compete, yeah against Amazon, and yeah. obviously that's you know, a, a, a concern because today Amazon is competing against more and more companies, so you know, that, well, that, that's not, a little I'm bit. I'm not down on the legacy. Yeah. What I'm trying to point out is, is that IBM was clear about this. They were upfront about it at IBM Think we were just at, which is they're saying the legacy has to evolve. Doesn't mean legacy's going to die. I mean, Microsoft clearly is going to the cloud. Their stock's at like 90 plus. It was at 26 a few years ago. So Satya Nadella taking over for Balmer. Clearly, that's the direction Microsoft has to go, and they're doing it now. They're a legacy company doing cloud. Oracle, legacy company doing cloud. IBM, legacy company doing cloud. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying, these would be the competition. I would put Google, and I would put Amazon in a new modern non-legacy kind of world. Yeah, look, and, and, and you find, uh, one of the lines I love that Werner Vogels talked about is he talked about AWS customers are builders. And he said, builders have a bias for action. And I love that, because if you talk to companies, and you know, we've talked a lot on theCUBE, digital transformation, much more than a buzzword, John. It, it, you know, I, I've not talked to anybody that they're like, oh, kind of hogwash, you know, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing I've been doing for the last 10 years and I'll keep being successful. We understand that change needs to happen, and it's not easy. So, if you've got data scientists, if you've got, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, understanding data, if you're, you know, embracing developers, Amazon has affinity with these groups, and that's why, uh, you know, they, they build and they listen to their customers, uh, and there's new services, and, you know, another thing, I mean, Amazon gets up on stage and it's not, you know, so much, oh, here's the vision of where we're going, it's, here's the stuff that we GA'd that we you know, already had you in the beta. You know, here's the new things, and they might give you a couple things in preview, but they, they iterate and move so fast. They're checking the boxes on the product side. But, but, but much more than checking the boxes, well, no, they're listening to their customers. Well, well of course, yeah. that's what they say, but, but we know they're doing that. But the thing, I mean, checking the boxes, they're, they're on the cadence of the Amazon releases, which we've, we've talked about that. But fundamentally, Stu, I think the two big things, and this is what I want to get your reaction to, is 
what's, Ama, what's going on with Amazon, uh, the consistent thing is that they lay out the preferred architecture of the modern stack, and it's not the same architecture as the old way. Two, the uh, SageMaker and machine learning and where AI is going, if you look at what Matt Wood discussed, SageMaker, my prediction, will surpass Aurora as the number one shipping uh, service for Amazon in the history of, the, of, the, of their product. That thing is on a torrid pace, and the way they lay it out architecturally, they're not head figuring with this thing. This is what we're doing. They lay out the architecture, and they're putting in the machine learning. So, to me, I love that. Now, all the other stuff that they're doing is just, is just the cadence of Amazon. More announcements, more services, general availability. They're moving the ball down the field, as Jeff Frick would say, matriculating the ball down the field. So, your reaction to the modern architecture and the SageMaker machine learning uh, for all developers. Yeah, absolutely. Amazon is setting the bar for how we think about architecture today. They are leaders in serverless, an area I've been you know, hot on the last year or so. Um, they, Werner was up on stage talking about iRobot, who uh, I got the chance to interview last year. So absolutely, they are the bar that everything is measured on in this industry. Uh, and if, if they're not, have the leading product in everything, they're a close second and they have so many services uh, that, that there is just this flywheel of not only services and customers and the, the new flywheel we talked about on theCUBE two years ago with Andy Jassy is data. Um, John, I want to throw back at you a, a question. You know, Amazon released something called AWS Secrets Manager. You know, do we trust Amazon with their secrets? Uh, you know, is the government coming after Amazon now? Uh, you know, there's some of these macroeconomic things happening. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're hearing everything here in Silicon Valley. What are you hearing lately? Well, what I'm hearing is one, people are really kind of not happy with Amazon's success because it, you know, they eat market share at the expense of other old guard or legacy vendors. And so that's taking its toll. Oracle to me is the biggest uh, company that's impacted most by Amazon. It's clear that the war of words is happening between Allison and Jassy. Two, there's a big policy battle going on in DC. I think Bloomberg broke a, uh, a story that uh, Oracle is trying to incite Trump to uh, tackle Amazon proper, but then Amazon's affected, Amazon Web Services is affected because they have all that Department of Defense and the CIA deal. So you're seeing Amazon for the first, Amazon Web Services for the first time dealing with competitive pressures, that's old school tactics, which is policy formulation, and as they say in the policy game in DC, Stu, the battle is won before it's even fought. This is new territory for Amazon. They really got to get their act together, and if I had to tell Andy Jassy any advice, would be like, look it, you got to start thinking chess game at this point, and understand that the competition is not going to roll over. We've said this on theCUBE many times. Oracle's not going to roll over. IBM's not going to roll over. Now, other companies? like Cloudera, who's down 30% on earnings, they're going to have to do a deal with Amazon, just like VMware did. So I think you have these big cloud players sucking the oxygen out of the room, and there are impacts. There's the growing startups or pre-public companies or public companies have to either join the ecosystem or find another partner. The major cloud players are going to fight tooth and nail for market share as stakes on the table is the future internet. It's basically everything in cloud that's going to extend to uh, democratization around decentralization, the future of money, sovereignty, um, government, digital nations, internet of things. These are, it's a high stakes chess game and Amazon is now on new territory and I think that to me is the big walk away is that no one's going to let them take this uncontested. Yeah, John, look at this crowd. The, the, the expo hall's filling up. Customers, you know, are still excited. You know, the, the, the buzz that I hear is, you know, Amazon, they listen, they still move really fast uh, when they need to make changes. Uh, I, I remember a year ago when we were here for the Google event, was talking, it's like, ah, Google's got yeah. such better pricing for the small business and everything like that. A week later, Amazon changed all of their pricing, you know, billing by the microsecond. I talked back to some of my sources and they're like, yeah, Amazon like listened and totally, you know, yeah. flipped the game. So well, Jeff, there are, he, you know, sustainable yeah. advantages, so difficult in the fast pace of change, yeah. but Amazon, you know, is doing better than what Oracle used to do in the past. They were past, they were kind of like, we'd get the lead and we kind of want the competition intact with them with the old sailing analogy. Amazon yeah. doesn't worry about the competition. They, they, they listen to their customers, well, they're moving forward. I think they, they do, they don't admit it, but they have to watch. They got to look in their rearview mirror a little bit, but Stu, to, to, end the, to end out the analysis, I would say the following. My observation is this, Andy Jassy and his team are very customer-centric. He said it on theCUBE many times. So, as an organization, they're very process-oriented, they all listen to customers. But if you look at what's happening in the world today, is that in the old way, 
the way that Intuit laid it out, that took months to provision software. The old technology business model or venture architecture for a business was make a sound technology decision then all the chips will fall in the right places. This is completely opposite now. If you look at what's going on with cloud and blockchain and cryptocurrency and decentralized applications, it's the business model that matters. The technology switching costs are now fungible with Lambda, you're starting to see these sets of services that could be spun up in parallel. So the scale and flexibility of the platform, and Werner Vogel's pointed this out on the keynote, this is fundamental. The decisions that are fatal to a company is the business model, the business logic, this is where the action is, that means it's not just a developer game anymore, it's the CTO, it's the data scientist, and Werner Vogel lays that out, and I think that to me was my big walk away from today's keynote, is that Amazon recognizes that it's not just about developers, make developers more productive, but bring all those people together to do the right for the business model, the business logic and applications. Yeah, John, we're always looking for what are those things that are slow down the company and the roadblocks. The one thing Amazon, I think, did a great job, they're out in front of GDPR, that are super hot topic out there, and they just say, you know, categorically, you know, we're ready for GDPR on all yeah. of our services, so, yeah. you know, full steam ahead, yeah. you know, don't stop your spending, keep growing. Couldn't be a better time to be a, a Cube host to analyze and talk about the competition. Let's see how Amazon handles the competition. Do they just keep pedal to the metal, or do they address it and play those 3D chess games at the Cube here in San Francisco for live coverage of AWS Summit 2018 in San Francisco. More coverage after the short break. We'll be right back.